Right. Hello and welcome to something a little bit different. That's right. It's not a podcast. This is for YouTube and YouTube only. I guess it's kind of a vlog, but it also isn't. Um, first off, shout out to the Patreon gang <clears throat> who have helped support me so far. Patreon, I've seen this two weeks early. So if you want to get access, early access to future content, Go and check the link below. There's even a seven-day free trial so you can see what it's all about before you have to spend any money. So, as you can tell by the title of the video, this is a build video. Not any build video, though. I kind of want to tell you a story, show you what I've done, and I'll try my best to explain as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing these things as the video goes along. Let's get started. The story starts with these little ladies. For those that don't know, these are two of my four morning geckos. I didn't plan on adding morning geckos to my little reptile army. They were given to me. It was unexpected, but a welcome surprise. And what happened next is all their fault. That's right, I'm blaming the morning geckos. For a while now, I've been staring at this view. This is the view I've been looking at every evening when cooking dinner. In fact, I spend most of my time standing, looking here. I love my animals, but it breaks my heart seeing the royals cruising in front of the tubs when I know they could utilise so much more space. And having added the morning geckos relatively recently, and seeing how much joy I could get from these tiny little lizards exploring, hunting, and just being themselves in what was a relatively small enclosure to me, but to them a palace, I knew I couldn't carry on keeping royals in racks. After a few podcast episodes, I realised there were so many cool animals out there, but I would love to experience, and my excuse was always, I didn't have the space or the money. Light bulb. If I sell the royals, which... Although I love, it breaks my heart every time I look at them in their tubs. I'll solve both issues. I'll have money, and I'll have space. So I sat down and had a long, hard think about what I wanted. An animal that's always been on my want list since I was around 14 or 15 years old has been Aki's monitors. I've never really been able to provide the space for one, um, so which is why I didn't get one. So now I sat down and spoke to someone who's been on the pod a few times, Paul's monitors. He's great to talk to, and he will say exactly how it is. He won't beat around the bush. And after a few conversations, I decided that dwarf monitors seem to check all the boxes and what I was looking for. Now, having no experience at all with any type of monitor, Paul kindly invited me to his house to meet some of his animals and get a feel for what it's like interacting with monitors. My wife and I spent the afternoon there getting to know Paul and his animals. We met the whole gang. I was allowed to feed Kermit the green tree monitor. Don't say that. <laughs> what they do is they obviously use stuff around them to adjust the food. Oh, don't bite me. He's all good, he's all good, he's all good. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so you see what he did there with your yeah, yeah, yeah. He did that to me, but he had a mouthful. And just like pinched and he, it. And he pinched my yeah. skin. It didn't hurt. Ooh. You're hard, showing off. Um, I think I did catch that on video, I think it's on YouTube video, to be fair. But he'll, in a minute, he'll just take himself back in. He's chill. You can tell by his demeanour, he's not... Yeah, it doesn't yeah. seem like he's, stressed he's, at all. He's, fine. he's watching me, because he's like, I know you, What's, you know, yeah. so... So you've got the tongs. He'll go back in, He's but he might sit there for another minute or so, he might jump back in, because he's, he's relatively chill. Yeah, that's, he's, a, he's a common boy. That's that so cool. Yeah, body. yeah. He was like, oh shit. I watched Paul feed Kader, his female green tree monitor. She can really fly, watch this. We handled the Ackies and the Gil and I, and I instantly fell in love with the Gil and I. And of course, it wouldn't be a trip to Paul's without meeting Mango. Now she's a whole different level of lizard, and honestly, she's pretty scary. Amazing, 
But one wrong move, and I knew I'd be leaving with a chunk of me missing. But wow, what an experience. Oh, another crop there. <laughs> that was it. Look, my mind was made up. Now, how can I fit these animals in at home? I wanted to provide enclosures that surpass the minimum recommended size sizes. I wanted to create naturalistic enclosures that would make like a centerpiece in my home. After years of explaining to people that, yeah, the royals do thrive in the racks, I wanted people to be able to come round and just say, wow. Not only that, I wanted to be able to stand in the spot and watch the animals doing what they do without me disturbing them, watching them climb, run and hunt. So that's what I did. I planned and I planned. Here you can see my original design and measurements and it hasn't really changed and here is what I would call a crude Photoshop. So that was that. My mind was made up. I'd already sold two of the racks pretty quickly and the arc show was just around the corner. So I was already down to be a vendor. I took as many animals as I could to the show. It went really well. I came back with seven out of the 25 snakes that I took with me. That gave me enough money to get started and enough snakes had left that I could condense down what was left to create the space that I needed. So the build begins. Luckily for me, I used to work as a timber merchant. I still have a good relationship with my old boss and he sorted me out with all the timber at a fraction of what it usually cost. Not only that, I sent over a cutting list and had every panel cut to size for no extra charge. Sheets collected, it's time to start building. I chose 15 mil white faced melamine chipboard, otherwise known as MFC. It's relatively lightweight and the white melamine itself is moisture resistant. The cut edges still do need to be sealed though. You can see here my daughter is just testing the size. This is the Aki's Viv. It's five foot long and just shy of three foot tall and three foot deep. Next up is what will be the Gillenai enclosure. This is just shy of four foot wide, four foot tall and three foot deep. And there it is, sort of mocked up with one of the glass ovariums too. Remember that original Photoshop? I'd been holding off ordering any lights. I wanted to get it all ordered, but Paul kept saying, don't order anything yet, don't order anything, don't order anything yet. Something is coming, it's worth waiting for. So I waited. It felt like forever, but really it wasn't that long, maybe two weeks. What was I waiting for? Boom! Luminize was launched. Now excuse the mess, this is what my kitchen looked like for most of December. Luckily, I have a very understanding wife. So, the next step was to move them into position and build the timber frame to support the Gillen I Viv. The Aki's Viv has a wooden 3x2 and a metal angle section to help prevent it bowing in the middle from the weight that is on top of it. And there we go. From the help of a good friend, we managed to lift the Viv up, slot it into place. And I think it's looking quite a lot like my design so far. Next step, get those luminized wired up. Wow, they are bright. It's like having a second sun in my house. So, progress stopped for a few days whilst I got this set up. This is a temporary enclosure for the Gill and I, as they are due to arrive very soon. Back to the build. With the Viv shells made, I started hunting for wood and found some great pieces locally. Whilst waiting for stuff to arrive that I'd ordered, I played with a few different layouts. I mounted a few of the branches on plywood to help them stand up a bit too. The vivs are now all sealed with silicon, so it's time to start building the backgrounds. I started cutting the main pieces of size, covering the entire back panel and coming halfway up either side. I positioned the branches back in the enclosure to work out where I'd be placing the ledges. I wanted the background to be relatively simple and the main focus to, of the enclosures to be the branches. The background is there to create climbable walls and a few smaller ledges to bask on. Once they were silicon in place, we began carving. Now, let me make one thing very, very clear. I hate polystyrene. It makes a mess, it feels horrible, it squeaks. Honestly, ugh, it makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. But my daughter and I got stuck in. We carved a rough design using a combination of craft knives, wire brushes, and anything else we could find that could carve a hole, really. Once we were happy with the design, we used a heat gun to go over the entire background. This tightens up the polystyrene and makes it much harder. It also creates a nice texture in parts. Next up was the grout. 
Grout's easy. You mix it up with water, you slap it on, you wait for it to dry, and you repeat. I did three layers of grout in both enclosures. Now, this is the part I struggle with. I'm colorblind, very colorblind. So I have to rely on Google and hope that I get the colors right. So off to Hobbycraft, I went with my wife to find some acrylic paints. Got a few and started slapping some paint on. Honestly, I wasn't very happy with the color, but I stuck with it, knowing that I can dry brush stuff over the top to try and get the desired color. Also, I did that tree trunk in the middle as the uh, enclosure was blowing around two mil. I just couldn't get the glass in. Oh yeah, the glass has arrived. Pause the build, it's Gil and I day. That's right, a quick trip to pause again, and I come home with these three beauties. We've named them Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno, after the legendary birds from Pokemon. These three have me smitten instantly. Back to the build anyway. Another trip to Hobbycraft and I came back with a whole heap of colours. Lots of dry brushing, layers upon layers to build up texture, and finishing with a black wash, I finally achieved the look I had envisioned in the first place. Paint's dry. Time to start adding some stuff. First up, substrate, followed by the decor. There's a slate stack, some nice branches, a mix of cork bark, and of course, a nice covering of leaf litter to finish it all off. Next up was the Gil and I Viv. Exactly the same process. Carve, grout, paint, paint, more paint. Add some branches. Done. But wait, I don't like it. Why don't I like it? I think it's the white ceiling. I had a photo I took, edited to add some blue ceiling to imitate the sky. I wasn't sure at first, but I thought, let's give it a go. I can always paint over it. Layer after layer of paint, the blue sky is done. And I think it just adds that finishing touch. Quick trip to the shop to grab some last minute decor and some substrate and it's time to finish the Gil and I Viv. And for some reason, I don't have any pictures or videos of how it looked finished. Let's skip forward a few weeks. I've been letting the enclosure air out and fully cure, checking the temps religiously to make sure that they were spot on. It was time to add the Gil and I to their new home. Now, as it's such a large enclosure and they are still pretty tiny lizards, I was expecting them to go in, hide and never really be seen. But in fact, they did the complete opposite. They are out and about all the time. Now, it's Aki's time. Another quick trip to Paul's, a quick hello to Mango, and we came home with these three little ones. These are our three new Aki's monitors, named Bulbasaur, Charmander and Squirtle. A quick handle and a photograph, then they're in the enclosure and left to settle in. Now, I'm having a few issues with the Aki's, nothing that Paul's done is they're fighting basically. Um, they aren't really getting on, but that's a story for a whole other day and I'll probably update you in the podcast in the future. Anyway, for now, it's amazing. Watching all the animals enjoy their new home, experiencing the luminize, simulating sunrise and sunset, watching the way all the animals interact with each other. It's great. So let's bring this full circle now. So I've done the Ackies, I've done the Gil and I, but our story started with the morning geckos. And by now, these little lizards have outgrown their temporary home and I'll do an upgrade. And that's what I'm gonna finish the video with. So here you go, a simple but effective enclosure, complete with live plants and cleanup crew. Oh, and can you spot the at? So there we have it, my original designs to where I am now. I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. There's still plenty more to come. Don't forget, if you want to get early access to content like this in the future, go check the link in the Patreon. It starts for as little as £2 a month and there's a seven day free trial and it helps me make more awesome enclosures. So that's that. 
If you like this vloggy style video, let me know in the comments down below. I've been Ben McIntyre, and this has been a Raptor Chat Vlog.